Introducing Matillion Custom Connector. With this feature, you can build your own custom connector to load any data from any REST API into your cloud data warehouse using Matillion Data Loader. In this video, we'll show you how to use Matillion Custom Connector to create a custom data source connector, then use it to build a data pipeline in Matillion Data Loader. We'll be connecting to a public REST API to retrieve data. Then using Matillion Data Loader, you can extract the data from the API and bring it into your data warehouse or data lake. First, we'll need a REST API that you want to try out. For this example, we'll use a public API for weather forecast data. Details will be in the video description if you want to follow along. To begin creating your custom connector, go to the Matillion Custom Connector site at create-connector.matillion.com. To get started, click Connectors, then Add Connector to begin setting up your custom connector. The Custom Connector Wizard will then begin. This is separated into three main sections, Request, Structure and Pagination. First, we'll need to name the connector. Click on the edit button next to Untitled Connector. For this example, we'll name it Weather Forecast. The name you use here doesn't have to relate to the REST API you are accessing, but using relevant names and descriptions will make managing your connectors easier. Now we can enter the endpoint URL for the Public Weather Forecast API and start building our connector. We then need to set the request to either GET or POST, depending on your API. For this example, we'll be looking at a GET request. Authentication. Choose the authentication type for the API you are using by clicking the drop-down. The available options are Basic Auth, which requires the username and password used to access the third-party service. Bearer token requires a single bearer token from your third-party service. API key requires a key name and the value of the key. Additionally, you can set the API key as the header or query parameter. And OAuth, which requires an OAuth entry. Select one from the drop-down or click Add a new OAuth. For this example, no authentication is required, so we'll select No Auth. On the Parameters tab, we specify parameters to validate the API call. Users can pass parameter name, value, and specify whether the parameter is configurable or not. You can see Custom Connector has automatically added query parameters for latitude, longitude and hourly, which are present in the request. These can be added to, removed and set to either constant, to retain the value you specify in this setup, or configurable, where the parameter can be set to values inside the wizard for testing purposes and will be automatically carried over when building the pipeline. Moving to the Headers tab, here you can specify any request headers that define the HTTPS interaction. This section could be used to define the media type of the response or for any information that helps the client know how to process the response body correctly. For authentication specific headers, use the Authentication tab to ensure they're managed with the appropriate level of security. Some headers are included and set automatically, such as connection and accept encoding. These headers can be overridden here if needed. So for example, we can add an additional header parameter, content type of application JSON. To specify, we only want to request JSON from the API. 
The body section is used for any data sent from the client to your API, and is only used for post requests. As this example we're looking at is a GET request, it will remain uneditable. Before moving on to the Structure tab, click Send, and the API Response and Request window will appear. In the Response tab, we can see the successful API call for hourly temperature data for the specified location. The Request tab shows us the URL, header and body of the request that we sent. The UI also displays the status code of the request and response. For example, 200 for success. And by sending the request before moving to the Structure tab, Custom Connector has generated the structure based on the successful request. Elements in the structure can be configured, edited and deleted to suit your requirements. For example, we could remove an element entirely or change the data type. To select which part of the schema your connector will take data from, click the ellipsis next to an array element and then click Set as Selected Data. On the Pagination tab, you can set your paging strategy. No pagination is the default setting. The available paging types are Relative Path, Full Path, Page Based, Link Header, Offset, and Cursor. So, for example, we could use paging to return a row count of a field by using the offset paging type. Select Offset from the Paging Strategy drop down and select a field from the tree to count the total number of records. For full information on how each of these paging types work, please visit the Matillion documentation site. Now it's time to use your custom connector. Click Save, then click the Use Connector button in the bottom left. Custom connectors can be used for the source of a pipeline in Matillion Data Loader. Also, it can be exported for use in Matillion ETL. For this example, we'll select Add a Pipeline for Matillion Data Loader. You'll be taken directly to Matillion Data Loader, and the new endpoint will be available to extract and load. Alternatively, if you go to the Matillion Data Loader site separately, your custom connector will be available. Select the endpoints you will use to build the structure of your data to be loaded to your target table. You can combine two or more endpoints in one pipeline, but we recommend one pipeline per endpoint to start with to get yourself familiar with the different configurations. During the setup of our custom connector, we only created one endpoint, so this is the one we will use. Then click Continue. Now we're taken to the Configure Endpoint screen. This is the section that will require most of the configuration and will determine the structure of your target table and how MDL will prevent duplicates, allow updates, and execute incremental loading. While creating the custom connector, we specified the configurable parameters. And these parameters you can set as dynamic or static on MDL. Dynamic parameters define the incremental columns. The authentication tab will mirror the authentication type chosen when creating your custom connector. With all the same authentication types available in Matillion Data Loader. Under the Behavior tab, the data structure matches the structure created while setting up the custom connector. You can deselect the fields that you don't want to include here. Next, under the Keys tab, set the key column. This will be used to match existing data to prevent duplicates and allow updates. 
go to the Keys tab and specify a combination of properties and parameters to create the key column. For this example, we'll select the hourly time property. Next, we'll configure the destination. You'll need to enter the connection details of your Snowflake account. Select the staging location, data warehouse, database and schema. We recommend adding a table prefix to ensure the target table is unique. Click continue and add a unique name for your pipeline and specify how frequently you'd like the pipeline to sync data between your custom connector and your target table. Click Create Pipeline, then your new Matillion Data Loader Pipeline using a custom connector will be created and will run at the set frequency. Once the pipeline has run successfully, your data will be available in your Snowflake database. For full documentation about custom connectors, please visit the Matillion documentation site. And to keep up to date with all the latest Matillion documentation videos, subscribe to the Matillion documentation channel.